Hey guys, Private Jack here, and this is part one in my series on how to create a butterfly and get that into Source Filmmaker. So, before we start, what we're going to require is some reference material. So, best place to find reference material is, well, the internet. So, off we go to the internet, and we're going to type in butterfly here. If I can spell. There we go. And we're going to pick up some images and have a quick look. Now, this butterfly that we're going to create is going to be very simple. And it's not going to have a huge amount of details. So, what I'm looking for is something that I can use as a template for modeling. And at the same time, maybe use as a texture as well. Well, like I told you before in the intro, I've already done this once. And... The actual texture that we're going to use is this guy right here. Okay, so I click on this, and what I want to do is I want to download this picture. But before I do that, I want to see if there's any copyright uh, stuff on this texture and whether or not I can actually use it or not. So I'll actually go off to the actual web page and have a quick look. Okay, on this page you can download free butterfly ping pictures. They're free picture downloads and therefore I should be able to use it without having to worry about copyright infringements or anything else like that. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find that actual picture and I'm going to click on it. Here it is. It looks pretty neat. The thing is, well, 42 46 by 2856 so it's pretty high res and I can actually use this to uh, not only as a texture but as a modeling template as well in Blender so I'm going to use this now I can either download it by clicking on the link or I can just right click on it and save as and I'm going to save this down to my desktop Okay, it should be on my desktop now, and here it is. So let's just have a quick look at it. Beautiful butterfly. Okay, that's going to work out really, really well. Okay, now, while we're here, and because we're going to use this not only as a template for modeling, but as our texture for the butterfly in Source Filmmaker, um, this thing, looking at the the uh, dimensions, the dimensions are not to the power of two. So we may as well set this thing up so that it's going to be ready for use in Source Filmmaker and be able to use it uh, to texture our, our model so that it will abide by uh, the actual requirements of Source Filmmaker. And the way that we do that is by going, taking the model or the uh, texture into an image editing program like GIMP or Photoshop or Paint.net. It can be any image editing software that you want. Um, the reason why I say those three in particular is that they have actual VTF plugins that you can install and actually create your VTFs straight from those three programs. That's GIMP, Photoshop, and paint.net okay so I'm gonna bring this image into GIMP I use GIMP it's a free software uh, it's open source uh, it's downloadable it's installable and it's a poor man's Photoshop is what it is there are tons of plugins for it and it does everything that I need it to do for the price that I pay for it which is nothing Okay, so I'm going to open that image in GIMP. I'm going to open that image in GIMP, point to my desktop, and bring this in. Okay, so looking up here at the top, I can see what the dimensions of the actual image are. Now, when I say it's not based on the power of 2, what that means is that the width and the height do not conform to a configuration of... 2, 4, 8, 64, uh, 128, 
256, 512, 1024, 2048, uh, 4096, 81, whatever. Okay, so it's not actually, these dimensions do not fall within those particular uh, parameters. What I have to do is I have to edit this texture now so that it will actually work in Source Filmmaker and be based the dimensions with by height conform to the powers of two. Now the way I'm going to do that is that this picture right now is massive. It's huge. I don't need it to be this big. So I'm going to scale uh, the image down to a 1K texture. I'm going to bring it down to 1024. So to do that, I'm going to go image, scale image. I'm going to le uh, leave the uh, perspective links uh, attached so that when I change this value, this one will change at the same time to uh, match the perspective values of the uh, the change. So I'm going to change the width to 1024. Hit enter and you'll see that this changed to 689, which is still not to the power of 2, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. Okay, and I'm going to hit scale. So that's going to knock the butterfly scale down to a 1K type picture. Now, that's got the width fixed, but the height is not fixed. And I need that height not to be 689, but I need it to be to the nearest power of 2. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make this, the nearest power of 2 would be 5, 512, but that would shrink the actual texture. So what I want is for this texture to be a 1K square type texture, uh, which means that I need to change this value to 1024. Now, if I scale the image to 1024, and to do that, I would break the perspective link and type in here, 1024. Now, when I hit scale, the width isn't going to change, but the height will. But it's going to stretch the butterfly, and I don't like that. Um, some people might. I don't. I want the thing to retain its original perspective. So I'm going to control Z out of that and bring it back to the 689. And what I'm going to do is, if I want to retain this perspective of the actual butterfly for my template, then I'm going to come here to Image, and I'm going to change my canvas size. I'm going to break the perspective link, and I'm going to change my canvas size to 1024 by 1024. And that's going to expand the actual canvas that this layer is sitting on. Okay, I'm going to place the butterfly in the center of that canvas. Okay, you saw how that kind of jumped. The actual canvas size is going to be 1024 by 1024. I'm going to hit resize. Now I have this image retaining its perspective. It's still 1024 by 1024. But now I want to have that layer, if I pick up on that layer, I can move that layer anywhere around. And I don't want to be, I don't want a uh, chance moving that layer around. I'm going to control Z out of that to put it back where it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this layer the same size as the actual image. And to do that, I click on layer. And down here, layer to image size. And now this layer and this entire image is 1024 by 1024. I can take this one step further now. Because I have my, my image to the power of 2, I can actually create my VTF now. And I can create a ping to be used in, blimp, uh, in, Blender, blimp, in Blender as my template for modeling. So let's do that. We'll get the textures actually set up and ready to go. So I'm going to File, Export, 
I'm going to export a ping picture first, and I'm going to create a folder for my project. I'm going to call it Butterfly. I'm going to drill into that folder, and I'm going to save this texture as butterfly.ping. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the uh, compression levels or anything else like that. I'm just going to hit export, leaving everything at its default settings. And now I'm going to create the VTF because I have the VTF plugin for GIMP. File, export. I'm going to change my file extension, and this is the only thing that you have to do to actually tell GIMP that it's a VTF, is change the extension. VTF and I'm going to save it to that same folder and we'll move it around later. Export. That'll bring up my exporting to uh, VTF um, screen. I'm going to leave alpha unchecked because I want that to fill in with a texture and I'm going to leave the versioning at 7.4. I want MIP I want it to create MIP maps and it is not a bump material. Okay, click OK and away it goes. That is now created a VTF. We're finished with this for now. Okay, we can close out of GIMP and we now have things set up. Discard the changes. We now have things set up in our folder. Uh, for the next step and that's going to be actually modeling the butterfly so stay tuned for part two and with that I'm going to say private Jack out